Uh, hi everyone, my name is Ronnie, I'm an electrical contractor. Uh, just making a quick video about contactors and relays, uh, basically what they are, what they do, how they work, and what are the applications um, in electrical installation. Uh, we'll start off uh, by explaining what are contactors or relays. Uh, contactors and relays are simply, a, uh, they're a switching device that's operated by an electromagnet. Uh, if you don't know what an electromagnet is, uh, it's probably a good idea to just uh, search YouTube and uh, have a look what electromagnets are. But basically what they are, they are magnets uh, operated by electricity and uh, they pull their contacts in or the, or the switch on the relay to another position, whether it's open or closed. Um, contactors are generally used for more high currents and high voltages. Uh, applications such as operating motors or chillers and things like that, compressors, whereas uh, a relay is more for a smaller, um, less demanding application uh, such as operating uh, possibly s uh, signal lamps or just uh, uh, simple uh, relaying signals to a building management system to say whether something is working or uh, it's not working. So relay is for small applications. Um, Contacts are more for larger currents and bigger, uh, more demanding applications. Uh, voltages, uh, they operate on different voltages. They could range uh, from 12 volts up to uh, 240 or 400 volts. Uh, same as the relays uh, are generally a single phase and they will operate on a, from a 12 volt, 24 volts or 240 volts depending on on the system that you have in your country, it will have different voltages, but basically they come in different voltages. Uh, for this application, we'll use 24 volts, as that is probably something general that's used all around the world. Uh, basically, how a contact uh, or relay works uh, here, we have uh, probably just a quick sketch of what a, a contact or a relay will actually look like. If you're holding it in your hand, you'll have these different terminals here. Uh, you'll have A1 and A2, which is your coil. Uh, electromagnetic magnetic coil and then you have your L1, L2, L3 which is uh, for a three phase application line 1, line 2 and line 3 and this would be the output end that goes to uh, a device such as a modular compressor. Uh, in terms of a relay uh, same thing A1 and A2 uh, generally they're not uh, labeled as A1 and 2 they uh, in a relay they 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, they're labeled from a number uh, but for this uh, purpose, uh, we'll label it as A1 and A2 just to keep it similar with the contactor. And then you have a common, which you have a uh, the live feed coming in, and then you have a normally closed and a normally open uh, contact. Uh, if you take a look inside, if we have a look inside of how this is built, uh, you'll have a coil between A1 and A2, which is your electromagnetic coil, and then you will have uh, contacts here for this contactor. Contactor one, and then you'll have another contact here. And so you'll have uh, the three contacts. This is a three-phase contactor. In a single-phase contact, you'll only have a one, one line. Uh, in a relay, same, same again. Between A1 and A2, you'll have a coil here. And then you will have a uh, two lines here, and then you'll have a normally closed and a normally open contact. And so, in, a, in, a, in an event of when this uh, coil here is energized by a certain voltage, it will push these contacts in and it will allow currents uh, and voltage to go through to the other side. Uh, same thing here. Once the relay is operated by the by the coil, the switch is moved over and that operates, allows the normally open to become closed and vice versa for the normally closed will become open. Uh, as you can see, this one is more for uh, operating maybe an indication lamps on a control panel, such as a run and a stop uh, lamp just to indicate whether a motor or a compressor is running or not, uh, if it's in a remote location. <coughs> An application uh, for one of these, for example, a relay, you'd use it maybe, uh, a contactor, you'd use it for running motors or compressors or chillers, something or that demands quite a lot of current. 
because contact is generally can be rated at high currents. So what you do here is uh, in a contact the, the way it's connected is you'll have the, the three phases connected here. So you'll have uh, the, the red, yellow, and blue uh, connected here. And on this opposite side of these contacts, you will have your device. Uh, in this case, we'll say it's a it's a three-phase motor, which is the contact is connected to. Now the coil would go to a voltage supply. So in this case, we will say it is a a 24 volt supply uh, coming from a transformer, and uh, this 24 volt supply has a switching mechanism over here, which is which can be anything. It can be just a normal mechanical on-off switch, or it can be um, a switch that's operated by an I/O controller, uh, controlled by a building management system, to tell the motor to switch on or switch off. It could be light dependent switch, pressure switch, uh, flow switch, any kind of switch. Uh, basically it's a switch, an on off switch uh, that's operated. Once uh, the, the switch is operated and closed, it will induce voltage uh, and currents into this coil. This coil will become energized and it will push the contacts in, allowing the motor to operate. Uh, in the case of the relay, same procedure, we have a uh, a switching mechanism here, and then we'll have a voltage which goes through the coil. This switch is same thing here; it can be operated by uh, many different uh, ways: mechanical switches, or pressure switches, and flow switches, whatever. And on here, you'll have the feed, which will which will come from your board, which is uh, through a circuit breaker. And then through here, you'll have. Uh, your devices that will be connected to either a normal close or normal open, or you can have them both. Uh, for this application, we'll put a, um, a run a run lamp and a stop lamp, and these ends here are connected to the neutral. Now, uh, the run and the stop uh, is for the motor. So, for example, uh, we might have our coil and it's not energized. We we have the the switch is open, the motor is not working. In the case of this, the normal closed will operate the stop lamp and the stop lamp will be illuminated so you can see that the motor has stopped. Once we switch the switch on, the electromagnetic coil pushes the, co uh, the contacts in and will operate the motor. This switch, let's say it's a current switch and it senses the current inside uh, that the motor is running and it's drawing current, it will close, operate the electromagnetic coil here and we'll move the switch from the normally closed to the normal open position and we'll close this contact here and we'll operate the run lamp and, and the run lamp will be illuminated but the stop will not be illuminated so as you can see here where we operated the motor through a contact but we also operated um, indication lamps uh, to tell us whether the motor is running or is stopped uh, for example the motor could be in a location where you can't uh, see or it's more difficult to access it, maybe it's underground. Uh, this application can be uh, an, on, on the control board outside and you can see whether the motor is running or stopped. So, so relay is more for um, control uh, small currents, as I said, and contact is for larger currents. They come in a single phase and a three phase. Relays generally come in single phase. I have not seen a three phase relay before. Um, also as well, it doesn't just generally have to be a motor, um, I've seen many applications where they have, uh, for example, warehouse lighting, uh, whereas each, uh, each set of lights, for example, every 10 lights are uh, put on a relay on, on one contact here, and another 10 on this contact, and another 10 on this contact, but it's operated by one single switch, so you'll have 30 lights coming on by using one single switch. Um, Obviously, we can't put all three lights on one switch because uh, of the high current and it will blow up your switch. So, we'll put in a contact and we can operate 30 lights using only one switch rather than having 20 different switches for every two lights uh, in a warehouse. So, that's, these are other applications, more for simplicity. Uh, <coughs> relays can also be used for building management systems. So, for example, uh, maybe a normally closed can send a 
false signal to your building management system and alerts the computer user that yes, this uh, particular device is in fault or it's it's in it's an okay um, state. So relay is generally used for that. Nowadays, most uh, I/O controllers come with built-in relays, uh, no volts relays, and things like that. So these are really being used uh, in terms of building management system and indication because you, they're using uh, more advanced I/O controllers and automation. So this this relay will be built into an I/O controller, which makes a relay by itself more redundant. Um, so that's basically about contactors and relays. Just a, a quick tutorial. Now there is a um, additions to a contactor, so you can have an overload on this. You can have an auxiliary contact on these contactors. There are attachments that go on it, um, but we we'll, we can go over it maybe in another video. Um, so that's basically for contactors and relays. I hope I explained that as clearly as possible. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And uh, if you have any other queries about any other devices that you wonder how they work, you can leave me a comment down below uh, inquiring about that and I can make a video about it maybe in my spare time sometime. Thank you for watching.